because um, it's a lot of senseless killings going on. I mean, this morning I heard of a guy getting killed on 111th and Figure War. Um, and they say he was trying to come at, what, run the trying to run the police over. Um, that just don't sit well with me. People keep dying for no reason. I mean, um, sober off. You sitting up here laughing like it's something really funny. Like, what's funny? Like, I really want to ask you that because you keep on smirking. Like, I've been sitting here watching you smirk the whole time. Like, I don't see nothing funny. Somebody losing their life for nonsense, that's dumb to me. Like, y'all said you're killing us in the world that we live in, that we got to fight for our life every day. And you really sitting up here like you got a little smirk on your face. Like, what the hell is so funny? Like, answer that question. <laughs> Um, I went to follow up on an assembly bill that was just passed in legislation, um, Assembly Bill 953, which will require y'all to track this data that y'all so called already tracked, just so we can make sure that there's no racial profiling going on, just like y'all say it ain't. Um, so my name is Tanisha again, I'm from the Youth Justice Coalition. We represent families and loved ones who have been killed by law enforcement. You have been you have been regularly impacted by racial profiling um, and faith leaders throughout LA County. Over the past year, our organization has worked together to write Assembly Bill 953. Um, and we are here today at the police commission meeting to notify you and other law enforcement officials in LA County about the changes in the law and they request a meeting with you um, to discuss this new implementation. On Saturday, October 3rd, 2015, Governor Jerry Brown signed 8953 into California's law. Authorized by, um, author, authored by Assembly Member Shirley Weber, um, 953 now requires law enforcement agencies to collect information on police stops in response to growing concerns about racial identity profiling and police misconduct. Um, Reverend Gary Williams is a pastor in South Central LA and a leader in LA Voice. A local official affiliate of Pico Youth and Families are encouraged um, that Governor Brown has a moral force um, courage to choose what is right over what is political. We now need to work together to ensure that the law enforcement agencies follow the new law. Our communities deserve a real chance, not a paper promise. Thank you. Ooh, that was a good one. Williams followed by Robert Cristo, David Sanchez, Jamie Garcia, and Louis Hunt. Hello, my name is Davon Williams, also from the Youth Justice Coalition, also supporting Assembly Bill 953. There is so many racial profiling. When I came in here early, um, today to come into the room, an officer asked me for my ID. I've never like been asked for no ID. I told him about the Assembly Bill. He ain't write shit down or nothing like that. And you, uh, Mr. Matthews, I hope you know you got a big shoe to fit. Uh, does it feel for you? You're re representing the black community and a lot of people are hoping that you are a change for him. But it appears not. You're gonna sit with the rest of them like this little bald head ass, um, doing what they do. You're, we're hoping that you're gonna be a representative for the black community. Stand up. Don't Robert Christian. Hello. So my name is Robert Christian. I'm here representing the Youth Justice Coalition. And I have a son. He's in five days. He'll be one years old. And I'll tell you right now, as young as he is, I'm scared for him. Because in 10 years, he's going to stop being cute and little. He'll be 11 years old. He'll be young, Chicano, and according to your officer, dangerous. I survived my teenage years. I don't know how I did. I had right. union officers sheriffs, officers on the train, criminalizing me, putting me against the wall, handcuffing me. I felt scared for my life as a teenager in this city. And I worry for my son because that's going to happen to him in 10 years. So that's why I'm here this morning. I'm here for him. So when he grows up, he doesn't have to be one of those lives that was taken. 644 people have been killed since the year 2000. Last I heard it was 18 by LAPD this year, but apparently it's grown. It's probably growing 21. as we speak. 21. It hasn't even been 12 months. More than one person a month you're killing. This is America, right? Because I think we're probably in a third world country with the numbers you're doing. We don't have a Gestapo or secret police. You guys are doing it in the public. They take shots to your guns, and you pack multiple weapons. You guys are going in there ready for war, and this is a community. There are children that live in these streets you guys patrol. Children that play in the yards, children that walk to school, and you're out there trigger happy. 
Officers have shot people from their car doors. Officers have shot people as they were standing, shot people as they were running. Shot the tasers they don't out. work, or at least you don't have faith in the tasers. <clears throat> God that forbid you break out the baton, you might actually beat somebody to death, and that's happened before in the list. So I ask you, what are you going to do about that for your children? Because you might have children or grandchildren. You think when they see your grandchildren, because the people of color on this commission, I'm asking you, you think when they see your grandchildren, when they're teenagers, they're going to recognize that they're your grandchildren, or they're going to see them as another youth of color, dangerous and ready to kill? Thank you. Thank you.